Thank you so much for coming here on such short notice. Don't even mention it. The oil on these machines can often be dangerous, so it's a good thing you called. Once we get this mill up and running, we can use the milled grain to start making our own very own Samsung branded noodles. From there, maybe we can even scale the business to, I, I don't know, dried fish and, and fruit or whatever. Yeah, maybe we could start brewing beer too and making sugar and clothes. Oh my God, the oil went in my eyes. Our own department store. Oh. I'll build oh. our own little farm. Ooh. No wait, an amusement park. Ooh. Maybe I'll even start my own hotel. Uh, I'd also like to build okay. ships. Can, yeah, I've always liked the ships. Maybe, maybe the biggest ones the, the world will ever see. Oh, Cars, help. my own newspaper and TV station. Please. I'll build tanks and Samsung will lead development Ooh. on technologies that we never thought would even be possible. Our tale begins in the Kingdom of Korea, months before the Japanese occupation of the country. Born on the 12th of February in 1910, Lee byung -chul was born in the small town of Uyeonggun in the South Gyeongsang province. He was born in a small... Uh, wait, no, that's his home right there. The family in which Lee byung -chul was born to fell under the category of Chunseokgun, or 1,000 bag household in Korean, meaning that the household owned enough land to produce approximately a thousand bags of rice annually, taking into consideration that the average bag of rice weighing about 160 kilograms, or 362 pounds, was valued at around 14 won, approximately $123 today. This could mean that the household that Yi byung -chul was born into could have made anywhere from $123,000 to $1.23 million US dollars annually a nearly unfathomable amount of money back then. Being born into a very affluent family, Yi byung -chul received personalized academic training. Despite being a bit slow of a learner initially, his grades started to improve with age, and eventually even went on to go to middle school in the capital. And at the age of 17, Yi byung -chul would marry his wife, Pak du -ul, as a part of an arranged marriage, who was three years older than him. Throughout his teens, Yi byung -chul would continue to do well in school, particularly excelling in the subject of math. And later, he would even be accepted into the very prestigious Waseda University in Tokyo. However, his stay at the university would be cut short, as he would drop out of the school, citing poor health as the primary reason. For the next two years, Yi byung -chul would remain at his home, jobless, gambling, and living off the allowance provided to him by his family. Oh, and it should be mentioned that he had three kids as well. It was said that he would frequently gamble well into the night, spending his days aimlessly, without any clear direction. One day, Yi byung -chul arrived at his home after yet another night of gambling. However, as he entered the room where his children were sleeping, he saw their faces illuminated by the moonlight. And by his account, he realized that he couldn't let life pass by like this. He claims that this was the moment that he realized that he was going to go into business. In 1936, after receiving 300 rice bags worth of capital from his father, about 37,000 US dollars today, Yi byung -chul started a milling business in the city of Masan and simultaneously started a transportation company in order to decrease his reliance on other companies. At first, his business grew rapidly. However, the very next year, Japan invaded China, sparking the beginning of the Second Sino-Japanese War, or the true beginning of World War II according to some historians. As a result of the war, all business loans were halted, and Yi byung -chul's business, being overly reliant on loans, had no choice but to declare bankruptcy. Despite his first business failing, it is said that Yi byung -chul's father, seeing the potential in his son's business, gave him an additional 30,000 won in capital to start a new venture, about 150,000 US dollars in today's economy. Needless to say, a generous startup fund indeed. 
he would travel across Japanese-occupied Manchuria in an effort to seek additional business opportunities, and an opportunity he would find in the form of commerce, importing and exporting products between Korea and Manchuria. Thus, in 1938, he would form the Samsung Trade Group in the city of Tegu. Sam, meaning three, representing size and strength, a well-favored number in Korea, and Sung, meaning star, to represent eternal shining light. He started by importing grain, a portion of which he took to turn into flour, and then later turning that flour into noodles. Here we can see the logo for the star stamp noodle under the brand Samsung, written in Old Chinese, considered to be one of the very first logos of the company. Over the next seven years, Samsung Trade Group expanded their products into dried fruits and fish. This business was so successful that he was later able to acquire even a brewery and moved his headquarters to the capital of Seoul. After the Japanese surrender and the liberation of the country in 1945, he also acquired a previously Japanese-owned department store, which would later change the name to Shinseke. Everything was going perfectly, until 1950. The 1950s saw the outbreak of the Korean War, and Yi Byung-chul was forced to abandon his business and flee to Busan, making it the second time a war had ruined his business. However, this time, it was different. This time around, he was able to diversify his portfolio, mainly through the incredibly successful brewery that he acquired previously. He had enough capital to start anew. And in 1951, Amidst the chaos of the Korean War, he created the Samsung Commerce and Trading Group in the city of Busan, or Samsung CNT for short. Using the war as an opportunity, his company would collect scrap metal from the war and sell them to Japan, who had a critical shortage of metal after World War II. And by doing so, he made millions within the first two years of founding Samsung CNT. By diversifying his business, keeping a fortified cash reserve, and by continuing to identify areas of opportunity, Yi Byung Chul made nothing short of a miraculous comeback. Throughout his business ventures, he held a firm business philosophy, serving society through business. With the newfound success of his third company, he continued to expand the business in different ways. And his next business venture would come in the form of a product that isn't generally associated when thinking of Samsung, sugar. At the time, nearly all of the sugar in Korea was imported, so it was really expensive and largely inaccessible to the public. Yi byung Char thought that Koreans should have more affordable access to sugar. So in 1953, he founded Jeil or CJ for short, the first ever sugar manufacturer in the country. Using the fortune he amassed from Samsung CNT, he built the largest possible sugar factory he could, one capable of producing 25 tons a day. This brand of sugar, known as Pexar, sold for a third of the price of other imported sugars, dominating the domestic sugar market in Korea. You can actually still find this brand of sugar today. More on CJ later. In addition to sugar, Yi byung Char saw opportunity in the textile and clothing space. Suits were also among the exclusively imported items in Korea that costed a fortune. So, Yi byung Char would go on to found Chaeil Industries to produce suits and clothes at an affordable price. His portfolio of businesses became more profitable year after year by the 1950s, having acquired insurance companies and even banks, all under the conglomerate named Samsung. Even though the nation had been destroyed by a recent civil war, Yi byung Char's life was a stark contrast from the dystopian country that was the post-Korean War South Korea. However, neither the citizens of Korea or Yi byung Char had reached their full potential, because it is now the 1960s Korea. 1961 saw the rise of South Korean president and later dictator Park Chung-hee come to power the man who would go on to transform South Korea into the country it is today. I made a video about him, so feel free to check it out. Despite the political turbulence of the country, Yi byung Char seemed only to care about the expansion of Samsung. And throughout the 1960s, he further expanded Samsung's portfolio of businesses. The first television broadcasting company in Korea, a construction division within Samsung CNT, a paper company, a newspaper company, Chungang Ilbo, a hospital, and even creating a successful fertilizer factory. 
although his involvement in the fertilizer industry would get him into some unexpected trouble. Upon seizing power, one of Park Chung-hee's focuses was to industrialize agricultural food production. And in order to grow food, you need fertilizer, and lots of it. Park Chung-hee appointed none other than Yi Byung-chul to start construction of the country's largest fertilizer plant. Yi Byung-chul, busy with running Samsung, left his second son, Yi Chang-hee, in charge as the director of the fertilizer company to manage the day-to-day -day operations. Everything seemed to be going according to plan, until, out of sight from Yi Byung-chul, excess amounts of saccharin, an ingredient used to make fertilizers, was secretly smuggled into the country. This surplus of saccharin would later be sold for a profit with politicians and businessmen alike pocketing the cash for themselves. The press managed to expose the smuggling incident causing public outrage, with Park Jung-hee himself personally ordering an investigation into the matter. Yi byung chul as the CEO of the company associated with the smuggling, was blasted by the public. His second son, Yi Chang-hee, as the director of the Korean Fertilizer Program, was sentenced to five years in prison. As for Yi byung chul due to immense pressure from the public, he declared that he would step down from the company, placing his first son, Yi Mang hee as the new CEO of Samsung. It seemed as though Yi byung chul was unceremoniously retired from Samsung, the company in which he had forged and expanded despite the political turmoil and inescapable barriers. However, the saccharin smuggling incident would not be the end of Yi byung chul His greatest challenge would await for him, a brewing plot by one of his sons to overthrow him from the Samsung throne and the formation of the now infamous Samsung Electronics Company.